Welcome to Grace for Dyslexia. Today we address dynamic reasoning. This is podcast number 12. Blessed Flight is a small but successful aviation company. Blessed Flight has been in existence for some 15 years, serving people not only at the local airport, but in several other regional airports in the area. It all started modestly with a fueling truck and one man helping to fuel airplanes as a contractor. He worked all hours of the day and night to service planes as needed. He seemed to always meet those needs with wonderful optimism, kindness, and a deeper appreciation for the business. The aircraft owners were quite pleased with Blessed Flight and wanted the company to do more than fueling. The owner of Blessed Flight was a man of 40. He was well worn from the hard work and exposure to all kinds of weather. He did not try to put on appearances for anyone. He was always honest and authentic in his relations with others. His name was Doug. Doug is married with three children. His wife works as a nurse at the local hospital, which early on created difficult times for the couple with scheduling child care and time with family. But now Doug has more of a set schedule and enjoys the opportunity that provides in his family interactions and relationships. Many years ago, Doug worked many odd jobs and saved his money with the dream of starting his own business. You see, Doug had dropped out of high school due to his dyslexia and just started working. Of all his jobs, the one he seemed to connect with the most was the delivery driver for a home heating oil company. He always enjoyed the relations with customers, despite the difficulties sometimes in making deliveries. Doug also had always loved airplanes and had given up on a dream to be a pilot when he left school. This led Doug to eventually invest in buying a plane fueling truck and arranging a contract with the local airport to serve small private aircraft. Doug had managed to start his business without much help. His customers 10 years ago had wanted more from his company. He needed to find help so he started seeking advice, taking classes, and finding trusted people to hire so that he could grow his company. He'd only been in business five years, but the timing seemed to be right. With the help from his banker, the advice of others in the business, and classes about business from the small business center, he set out to hire the right people. He needed a business manager, someone to continue the fueling services, and customer service representative to meet customer needs. Doug got a loan from the bank to expand his office space, providing a lounge for pilots and guests, a cafe, and a line of accessories for planes. He rented a hangar and hired a mechanic to do work on planes for maintenance and occasionally repairs. As things grew, so did the demand for his services at other airports. Today, Doug's children are all about two years apart and in middle school and elementary school. One day, his oldest came home from school. At dinner that night, she asked her father if he would be willing to speak to her class about his business and career. At first, he was going to say no, but his wife saw the expression on his face. She caught his attention and gave him a look to say, you had better do this for your daughter. Doug caught on and said he would do it. Their daughter was delighted and explained the details to the whole family. That night when Doug was alone with his wife, he shared how hesitant he was to present to his daughter's class. His wife said, But Doug, why would you be? You have a very successful business. Doug said, Honey, you know my history with school. I just don't want to embarrass myself or my daughter. Doug, 
you have so much to share about how you worked so hard to get this far. The students need to hear your story, if for no other reason than to know it's possible, said his wife. But what if they ask me about my schooling, he interjected. That is part of your story, Doug. You have no reason to be ashamed. Look where you've gotten even without a high school education. You are very learned about business and serving your customers. It's your life. She then asked, Honey, can I pray for you? I want God to help you with your feelings. Doug agreed to prayer, and while praying, he sensed a warmth in his heart. His mind seemed to shift to what he could say rather than on what he did not want to share. Doug prayed on his own afterward to thank God for his wife, family, and business. In the days that followed, Doug kept working on the story he would tell his daughter's class about his business. Not only to make it informative, but to draw out the entrepreneurial thinking which Doug had used in developing his business. Doug came to grips with his lack of education and decided he would cross that bridge if the question was asked. He did not want his presentation to be sidetracked by that part of his life. On the day of the presentation, Doug did nothing different with his appearance than he normally would have done on a work day. He arrived a few minutes early and greeted the teacher. He sat in a chair near the rear of the room waiting. His daughter turned and smiled at him with pride. Doug was only a little uncomfortable at this point. After being introduced, Doug shared the story of his business start and how it had grown over time. He told of all the difficult but very important decisions he had to make along the way, seemingly never knowing if they were the right decisions. He talked about his share of mistakes, too. He emphasized that his desire to be a business owner and to make good quality decisions along the way were so important. He ended with praising his family, especially his daughter, and thanking God. Questions and answers came next, and Doug was ready for them despite his nervousness about his education. The first few questions were easily answered and created no emotion for Doug. Then it happened. One of the boys in class asked, What sort of training did you have before you started your business? Doug did not understand what happened next, but he answered the question about his leaving school and learning all he needed to know as things happened. He was not nervous. He did not regret sharing it. He checked his daughter's expression and she was pridefully grinning from ear to ear. That evening at home, Doug pulled his daughter aside to talk. He wanted her to tell him how she felt things went. He was really ready for a punch in the gut about his education. She looked at her father in the eyes with tremendous love. She simply said, Daddy, you did a great job and I'm so proud of you. Later that night, Doug prayed to thank God for the day and the love of his family. His wife asked how things went even though she could tell it had gone well. Doug was so humble in his response, his wife wanting more excitement from him. Doug just said, I have given God control and I cannot take credit for the gifts he has given me, including how things went today at our daughter's school. His love and goodness are without end. Inspired by Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. Many entrepreneurs happen to be dyslexic because of their gift of reasoning about how business should be run. What are your entrepreneurial ambitions? How can you make them happen? Grace for Dyslexia is a podcast dedicated to Christian encouragement for children and adults who have or are struggling with dyslexia. All stories in Grace for Dyslexia are fiction. Names, characters, places, and events are the product of the author's imagination. Any similarities to actual events, locales, or persons living or dead is coincidental.